It's the big day of the Kalki Heroes final, and after a seriously intense match, your team gives it one last push to secure the victory. And even after playing superbly, they just miss out after an amazing save. Now you, as the manager, need to make the crucial decision on which players to substitute onto the field for the penalty shootout. Now you think about it for a bit, but then you turn to your right and you see the perfect tactic. You see the answer to your problem. Integration by substitution. Now, integration by substitution is a sort of chain rule for integration, similar to the way integration by parts is a product rule for integration. So we focus on composite functions, and the way it works is we take y equal to f of g of x, scaled with g dash of x, and we'll explain why later, and say we wanted to find the area under the curve between a and b, then this area is the integral of that function. But if we make Make the substitution u equal to g of x, then we end up with a simpler graph with the exact same area. So that means the integral of this graph is equal to the integral of the other. But what does all of this mean? How do we integrate with respect to u? How can we visualize integration by substitution? Well, let's start with a graph of y equal to f of g of x, and recall that we can approximate the area under the curve with rectangles. And to get the exact area, we take the width of the rectangle and make it as small as possible. And if this doesn't sound familiar to you, check out our integration video linked in the description below, where we explain all of this. Now we're going to focus on one thin rectangle between x and x plus delta x, where delta x is some small change in x. Now let's create a third axis, the u-axis, where u equals g of x. So for example, if g of x equals x squared, and say that when x equals 2, y equals 3, then when u equals 2 squared or 4, then y is also equal to 3. Now notice how the y coordinates are exactly the same, but x and u are different. And we can fill all the coordinates of the graph like this, giving us y equal to f of u. Now the blue area here corresponds to the transformation of the pink area. And the blue area lies in between g of x or u and u plus delta u. And remember the y coordinates stay the same, so the height of the blue rectangle is the same as the height of the pink rectangle. Only the widths have changed. So the blue rectangle has area f of u times delta u. And if we make the blue strips width as small as possible, then the width becomes du. Now what we also know is that du by dx is equal to the derivative of g, since u is g of x. And then multiplying by dx across gives du equal to g dash x dx, which means f of u du is equal to f of g of x, as both rectangles are the same height, times g dash of x dx. So we can see that the width of the rectangle has been scaled by g dash. Now if we add up all the extremely small rectangles, then this is the same same as integrating between the respective bounds. And this is our integration by substitution formula. And naturally, we can extend this formula to indefinite integrals. Now that's great, but how do we use this formula? How can we utilize integration by substitution? And the way to see this is from some examples. And the type of problems you'll use substitution for are one, cancellation, two, substitution, for composite functions, and three, the most common of all, both cancellation and substitution for composition. So let's start with the first type, cancellation. Say you wanted to find the integral of sine x times cosine x. Then let's make the substitution u equal to sine x. Then we have the integral of u cosine x dx. Now we have a u in the integral. So how can we change from integrating with respect to x to integrating with respect 
to you. And the way we do this is we see that du by dx is equal to cosine x, which means dx is equal to du over cosine x. And so we can just substitute in for dx. Now we see that cosine x cancels out, leaving us with the integral of u du, which is just u squared over 2 plus c. And since u equals sine x, we get sine squared x over 2 plus c, which is the answer to the integral. Let's now try the second type, substitution for composite functions. So say you wanted to find the integral of 1 over x plus 1. Then we begin by substituting substituting u equal to x plus 1, which is the inner function. Now we know that du by dx is equal to 1, that means du is equal to dx. This gives the integral of 1 over u du, which is a classic integral with the solution ln u or ln mod u. And since u equals x plus 1, we get ln x plus 1 plus c. Now for the final most common type, both. Say you wanted to find the integral of 2x cosine x squared. Then we begin by subbing in u equal to x squared, which is the inner function. And this gives du by dx equal to 2x. So dx is equal to du over 2x. Combining everything gives the integral of 2x cosine u du over 2x. And we see that the 2x cancels out, giving the integral of cosine sine u du, which is just sine u plus c. And since u equals x squared, this is sine of x squared plus c. Now you may drop down and say, how do I know what to substitute? Can I sub in multiple functions? Can I sub in functions that aren't even there? And we answer all of these questions and more in our problem sheet, which is linked in the description below. We also explain how to deal with definite integrals and we show you some very crazy and unexpected results. Now, as the manager, you make the crucial substitution based on what you've learnt, and after an intense penalty shootout, the last penalty remains, and your substitute steps up, and everyone holds their breath. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe, and head over to mathesy.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of my videos.